following instructions that Bernard gave on his YouTube channel and Bernard this is my sort of wild garden area up by the roadside uh, quite a ways from my house several hundred feet anyway and the plant that I'm going to try to propagate is this azalea over here I think when I referred to it I called it pink lights it's in the Northern Lights series. Uh, I'm Now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe I lost pink lights, and this one is actually what they call rosy lights. Anyway, very fragrant. To me, it smells like white carnations, something along that area anyway. Very spicy. And I can smell it a long distance. Today's a damp day. I'm out between rain showers and I can't smell it today but when I walked by up here yesterday oh you could smell it from 50 feet away easily no problem at all. So that's one that I plan to propagate um, as soon as the blossoms drop and it puts on that first uh, boat of new growth there. I'll take some cuttings and uh, follow Bernard's instructions and hopefully have as much luck as he did. Now let's look at the second one. On my way to see Azalea number two, I thought I'd show you a look at this year's blossoms on the red flowering horse chestnut. It's really loaded in blooms this year. That doesn't mean a thing as far as how many chestnuts it will have. It never has more than seven or eight, no matter how many blossoms are on it. I really think it has to have something to cross-pollinate with. I have neighbors that are, oh, several hundred feet through the forest here and they have a regular white horse chestnut on their lawn. This year it has a number of blossoms. Some years theirs doesn't bloom. So if it's cross-pollination and the bees find their way over that distance, maybe I'll have more this year. This one is called Gibraltar and it is a bright orange you can see. I've had several gardeners say they wouldn't want it in their garden because it would clash with things. Well, clashing has never been an issue with me, I guess. I just like it because it blooms. It doesn't have very much of a fragrance at all, but I wouldn't mind having a few more of them, so I will try propagating it. And I'm in under that horse chestnut tree to get this. This is behind the horse chestnut tree. Another week or two when the blossoms are done, I'll take some cuttings and... Uh, finish this video for you. I'm not sure if I mentioned the date uh, when I was doing the clips showing these azaleas in bloom. If I didn't, I'll get it off of the clips when I put it on the computer and uh, put an annotation up here. But now it's July the 1st, Canada Day, Happy Canada Day, and they have uh, finished blooming and I've been out taking cuttings and this is the one that well, it's in the Northern Light series and I'm calling it Rosy Lights, the pink one. I've already potted up six of those but I wanted to show you I guess I'm close to your method Bernard. <laughs> Get the stem wet. I don't know if rooting compound loses its strength over time or not but this is a very old bottle so. and I just tap it like that to get rid of most of that. You don't want very much. You poke them down in the soil and get the soil around them. This is Gibraltar, if I didn't say. Gibraltar, which, I don't know, I never got really close to actually smell the blossom. Um, doesn't It certainly doesn't have a, a uh, scent that you smell from a distance. And as I said before, most gardeners don't like it because of the very strong color, but I'm not bothered by that. Well, I will continue doing that, and uh, something that I don't think Bernard did, but I'm scared that I will forget to water them. I'm going to put them inside of this plastic bag, and I won't seal it tight, I'll just you know fold the opening under it, and then they will go below this bench. There is a, a shelf below the bench here, it never gets in the sun. So. In several weeks time we will come back and see if I have any rooted cuttings. Well thank you very much for watching. That concludes this little video.